In other generative AI news, uh, Windows uh, Copilot went went uh, GA, and it's this is a huge deal, folks, because this now it literally it, you know this is not in preview. You can go and do a you know do a Windows C, and the Copilot comes up. Now it is a a preview Copilot. If you do want to do preview and see all the cool features that are inside uh, things like uh, Windows Photos, uh, the new Outlook, right? Instead of Mail, uh, you get a, I would call a mini version of Outlook. It's not the enterprise version, but adds all these generative AI tricks. Heck, if you want to do uh, some of the generative AI magic tricks in in uh, Clip Champs, for instance, you want to you know take a video and uh, you know, take it 16 by nine, uh, put it into portrait and slam it into Instagram uh, for a reel. Uh, yeah, for real uh, with a Instagram reel, you can do that. So the the amount of users is daunting. I would say there's probably 1.5 billion Windows users. And then when you slide on Microsoft 365, you're probably going to have 2.x billion uh, users on this scale matters, Daniel. And what's happening is because Windows is the preferred operating system for for a, a computer, I believe it has ninety percent uh, market share. Everybody who knows how to use the Microsoft Copilot will then go to work and know how to use the Microsoft three sixty five Copilot, uh, the one for Dynamics three sixty five, the one for GitHub. So. There's not going to be this massive retraining that you might have if Microsoft didn't uh, have this uh, on Windows. And while I hate to use the word democratizing generative AI, this is about as... Why do you hate that? I don't know. It sounds political. Uh, but I like the idea of expanding generative AI to, to literally everybody on the planet. So uh, faster than I thought. Microsoft said it was going to be out. They telegraphed this, the New York event that we covered with the 6.5. But it's great to see it's there. I downloaded the preview as well, uh, the lower risk version of the preview. And, and I urge you to do that as well if you want to get uh, all of these generative AI goodies. That was pretty quick. But I guess we did kind of cover this one last week indirectly, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm peeping Melody Brew's article, More Inside Strategies Expert Analyst. She quoted you in it. That's pretty cool. So what you do now is you have your analysts cite you. <laughs> well, I mean, I tell them to cite, you know, the smartest people out there. I didn't tell them to choose me. Was my phone line busy? What happened? Possibly. Dude, you're in corporate meetings, like executive Damn. level Damn. meetings. You know? Hey, look, it's a race to a billion. What can I say? The world's largest independent research and analysis firm. Do you love how that sounds? Uh, it is. And I'm the world's really largest um, independent analyst firm in downtown Austin. Yeah. Wait, no, I got an office down there. Anyway. Um, <laughs> That's right. You, you guys got to love Fridays, people. You, you got to love Fridays. So listen, to pick up your mail here. I occasionally get down there. All right. supporter. Hey, so here's the thing with, with the co-pilot, and, and I've said this for a while, I started to allude to it in the SAP. What Microsoft's doing really well is Microsoft sort of understands the way a, uh, a worker or a consumer is going to want to experience and interact with its apps. Okay, and in this world, we basically want a ubiquitous experience, you know, the kind of starting with the millennial generation, Pat, um, but definitely into these Gen Z is there's no reading instructions anymore. There's no um interest in um any sort of tutorial we want to be able to pick i say we as in me because you're old but we want we want to be oh, able geez. to just That's use i know i know it hurts, <laughs> it hurts. Well, i am no listen i'm not going to hold your lack of experience against you ever no, thank you okay thank you. I, I appreciate that that's uh that's very sweet of you um <laughs> by the way that was uh, uh, that was that was ronald reagan uh, debating, God, I even forget, maybe Jimmy Carter? No, 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 yeah. no, not Jimmy Carter. I don't know, the guy who lost. <laughs> Whoever that was, I was actually, I was, that was before I was old enough to, actually, I wasn't alive. But anyways, the um, <laughs> the the point here, though, is is ubiquity, simplicity, um, and the fact that as you go from kind of co-pilot to co-pilot, and I asked this question, Pat, and you were kind of, you know, you banged me on it a little bit because it was something that's kind of in motion, but the truth is, and I said this about SAP, like, 
we're going to have a, a co-pilot for co-pilots. We're going to have an app for apps and a Gen AI for Gen AI. And your point of never being a single pane of glass is true. Having said that, the idea of ETL and APIs and calls and SDKs has existed for a long time. And why do those things exist? It exists because people don't want to have to go into every single unique tool to be able to get the benefit of Gen AI. Okay, so if you want to be able to generate an image in, in Bing image generator, truth is, is in the long, should you have to go to Bing forever? Or should there be a digital assistant that you could say, look, create an image and it would know that what you're asking is something that gets done in Bing. So yeah. Microsoft is not entirely there yet, but I think what they're showing directionally is they're trying to create a ubiquitous, seamless experience that goes across co-pilots. I admire that. I think it's going to take some time. I think it's going to take some work but I think they're on the right trajectory. The only other company I think that's got a likely path to doing that is Apple. Will Apple do that? I have no idea what Apple's doing with AI. I, I prefer to pick on them for the things they do wrong rather than, um, you know, rather than prognosticate the things they may eventually get right. Um, so, but having said that, you know, Apple doesn't have productivity apps that people use heavily. Uh, yes, I do know they have a, 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 a Word document thing, but does anyone use that? I'm no. not in the enterprise for sure. No. Um, and so, you know, it's not really a thing, but my point of more of having that kind of ubiquitous front end, I mean, that's what Siri's kind of supposed to be. It just doesn't really do that well yet. So, all right. Anyways, that's all I got to say about that.